Grasslands have a tremendous amount of value. It's important that we manage them so deliberately. It goes beyond just the intrinsic value of the habitat. It's about a working landscape. To me, the grasslands is one of the most beautiful places. It's absolutely spectacular. It's got the most austere beauty. Probably the favorite thing about living here is the wide open spaces. It's quiet. <laughs> we don't have any neighbors. We're pretty attached. We wouldn't want to live anywhere else, I don't believe. Sagebrush steppe is the habitat type that you see right here. This is what sagebrush steppe is. We're in it. And of course, sage grouse is a big part of it, a very important part of, of the curlew. As the sage grouse is threatened for, from a variety of reasons, it's, it's, it's a special place. There's a variety of big game animals that also utilize the curlew. It's also important for working ranching. Our interest out here is to, to merge or bridge relationships between public land and private land. We're stronger together. The border's kind of taken away with this project. I think the impact from that is big. If we get everybody involved, the chances for success skyrocket. It's a tightrope that we walk, that we want people to be able to use the land, but we have to use the best available science to protect it. If you treat it well, uh, it will treat you well. We don't want to ruin our land. We want to take as good care of it as we can. It's a remarkable landscape with a lot of opportunities here to really do some good things. Not only you know, from a wildlife perspective, but also from a landowner perspective. The curlew has been managed hard historically. Generations have been down here, things have changed. A lot of landowners, their fathers and grandfathers spent their entire lives removing sagebrush. You read about my pioneers and they chopped a lot of that sagebrush down with axes and then they took it and put it in a big pile and burned it. Sagebrush isn't worth having. It's, it's a waste. There is an argument that there's too much sagebrush, you know, you hear that from some people. But really, when it comes right down to it, you know, this does serve an incredible function for wildlife and for livestock. My great-grandfather settled here in 1938. There's like uh, about 18 permittees that rely on the Kurla grasslands for, for all their grass. We feed them hay in the winter time, and in the summertime, we're on public lands. In the past, the cattle have been grazing out of the stream, and our aquatic habitat ultimately suffers, and we lose our stream bank. So we're getting them some alternative water sources. If you can move the water, then the cows will move toward the water. We've had a lot of years of working with the farmers and ranchers, and I think that's to our advantage. They have a lot of trust in, in our agency for the most part. And the nice part about all this is, is it's voluntary. We present them with, with some of our technical assistance, show them how conservation can help them out. We provide some financial assistance, and they provide some financial assistance, so they have a buy-in to it. We just got some new pivots in. That's a first for us. These pivots are turning out to be really a good asset making it so we can utilize the water better that we have. We have a creek that runs through that we irrigate with. Without that water, we wouldn't have anything. It's the lifeblood of agriculture. And now that we're getting into no-till, that will only work if we get some moisture. 
No-till is a term used for farming without any tillage practices other than planting. After you harvest your crop, there's the residue left, and the residue will, will stay on the soil and called with armor it. In my mind, erosion is the primary reason for no-till. It will help keep the soil in place, so we're really trying to get these guys to do a lot more no-till. It takes a financial commitment in many cases to make a change. And unfortunately, it's it's the dollar that, that determines a lot of what you do. It's a little bit of a mindset change. It's a little difficult for these guys to, to grasp onto that at times, but they see that they're losing topsoil. We have work to do. <laughs> when we see erosion going on, um, we have work to do. There's only a few streams on the Curlew National Grasslands, and those streams in certain spots, they're so downcut you can sometimes can't even tell the stream's there. And when you get glimpses of them, there's raw vertical banks. So a tremendous amount of bank erosion has gone on. We're not gonna take it back to what it historically used to be. What we're doing is re-elevating the channel. From that milk feed up, I wouldn't even worry about that. Efficiency is extremely important because I'm um, spending taxpayers' dollars. Uh, my own money. Hundred feet of stream channel can be done in, in two to three hours. Juniper are actually going in for stream bank stabilization. Something that stabilizes holds the banks in place while the vegetation gets established. Yeah, right in there, and then you can pull the tops back towards the bank. The neat thing is, is by using natural things that we already have around us, we can keep costs down. It's a cost savings for the public. So when I start seeing finished products and outcomes and, and uh, the benefits that it's providing the community and our landowners and our farmers and our ranchers, that gets me really excited. On the Curlew National Grasslands, the streams are a limited resource. That's a tremendous habitat and a tremendous resource that we need to protect. One of the most important small parts of that habitat type that sage-grouse need to be successful in a sagebrush steppe ecosystem is the wet area of that system. As a wildlife biologist, the main reason we come out here is to do wildlife surveys or check up on uh, primarily sage grouse and sharp tailed grouse. And then we have a few other things we're looking at too, monarch butterflies. What we're looking for is uh, milkweed, which is the only plant that the caterpillars can eat. Showy milkweed is an increaser, so it increases with disturbance. So there's a chance that actually the history of the curlew and the grazing here actually created the habitat for the monarch butterflies. Livestock operation in general is not a problem. Sometimes some of the infrastructure can be, particularly fences. Sage grouse like to fly in the dusk or at dark, and they fly at very, very low level. I mean, just sagebrush height. They can fly into those fences and get killed. So one of the things we're doing there is uh, marking them with little plastic tags so they can see them. We estimate about 900 to 1,000 tags per mile of fence. That's a fair amount of work and money to put into this particular species. Is it worth it? Absolutely. We've got a declining sage grouse population. It's in the best interest of everyone to get that population back to a healthy level, whether it's our sportsmen or whether it's, it's the people who rely on that landscape for their livelihood. There are challenges to, to be able to work when you have multiple interests on a piece of ground. You know, what's more important, a species or my livelihood? That's a hard question to answer. So what I try to do is find other ways so we're not 
pitting them against each other. That's the only way we'll make this work here for this species and for a lot of other things across the West. Restoring our landscapes, be them forested or non-forested, like the Curlew, is the highest of priority. That's what our mission is. When, when we say caring for the land and serving people, that's what restoration work is. It brings a lot of satisfaction to me to be able to see these projects go in and see how much improvement that can actually make. I'm very proud of this project. It is a tremendous partnership. It's been years in the making to get to the point where we are. A lot of folks are coming together to realize that we have common ground to use this place, but to, to use it, we have to be able to sustain it for the long term. No matter what the federal incentive is, the core value is improving our landscape. What we're doing on the ground is the important thing.